Uh, well, look, you know, as as things started to blow up in the media and and we got a real understanding of the impact that this was having on a uh, you know a bunch of different territories around the world, I was wearing two caps then. So I was wearing my program director's cap. Um, you know, and also keeping in mind that we just rolled out a new program um, for the first time in 2020 at the film school. Uh, that, you know, the third year graduate slate and also how we were going to facilitate teaching. So there are a bunch of different moving parts. Um, with respect to, let's just talk about the third year production. Yeah, we, we it, the one thing that I hope everyone's got, you know, got the message from um, this year is we understand why students come to film school um, and they come to, to learn, you know, their skills and then apply those by the time they get to their third year. So for me, um, I always want to deliver on the promise of the premise to use a film, to use a film term. And, and I knew that this was going to be um, difficult this year. And, and also you've got to remember we're working within the framework of an institution um, that, that at the end of the year students want to finish so that they can be awarded the degree, um, you know, receive the learning outcomes that, that would speak to them um, with respect to their, their growth and, and, and maturity through the program. And so, yeah, I, I guess to begin with, when everything went into lockdown, I, I didn't, you know, there wasn't a master plan or anything like that. We really were just taking things on, um, on, on, on face value and what we were getting told. I think it's safe to say we were figuring it out as we would go along. And not yeah. just the film school, but the whole world. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And so yeah, but you know, as 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 we started to sort of work out ways to to facilitate things, and and we could see that, and so you know, then we're taking information from um, those industry practitioners that landed landed back in early, and 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 looking at the processes they put in pl place, we realised that um, it was possible. But I guess the the one thing I would commend the class of 2020 on is actually really adhering to those um, to those protocols that were put in place, and they weren't dismissive of oh yeah look once we leave campus we'll just do whatever we want. Um, the um, the behind the scenes video that was produced for the end of year graduate screenings, you know, as much as it pulls on the heartstrings, it's also a demonstration of the adherence that the cohort made to those um, to those protocols, and that that allowed us to facilitate the production. And again, going back to it. Um, the idea that insurance was the, you know, um, was the deal breaker. And so we could prove to yeah. the industry. So with regards to the protocols and stuff like that, who, it, like, who is the one that comes up with that? Is that a Queensland government thing or is that something the film school devised specifically? Oh, it's a mix of everything. So Screen Queensland published um, the, um, what was it? The, the, the Guilds of Australia came up. There was a big, um, there was a big Zoom session with, with basically the national film industry looking at, looking at, um, you know, practices that they want to put forward. We were taking um, advice from COVID safety officers that had actually gone back into production. And we were, we were trying to find the delicate balance. And it's a bit like what we do with safety, um, is we know that in a certain way, a student production doesn't have all of the, the budgetary, um, you know, just the budget full stop that they can throw at something to reach the ambition of, say, industry with respect to stunts and safety. But we'll try and find that middle ground that allows them to facilitate it and come home safe but not, you know, not hemorrhage themselves financially. And it was the same thing here as well, where we just turned around and went, okay, here's what industry is doing. Um, where's the middle ground for what our, our students can, can reasonably do um, and at the same time not jeopardise their health and at the same time you know, not, not jeopardise the health of the actors or the locations that they were visiting. And with all those combinations, we come up with a plan. Um, I, I never thought I'd, I never imagined that I'd be passing a, a federal government infectious disease control um, you know, um, induction this year, but here I did it. Um, yeah, I can imagine there's a bunch of different inductions and things you have to do and all that type of stuff. Yeah, know? but once you've got all of that information at hand, you then look at what, you know, um, we've imparted onto you guys and say, okay, well, hand on heart, we think we've met best practice. Off you go. Um, please listen to what we've had to say, which you did, and we got the outcome we wanted. What were some of the challenges that we faced um, in regards to getting uh, us back into production mode and getting us ready for principal photography? What were the things that we um, had to overcome uh, in order to get that authorised and ready to go? Oh, look, well, you know, there's a... Um we had to we had to come up with a you know um, an induction and a protocol that the the university would look at and 
and look at the advice we had taken for it. Is the it. university like an upper level above the film school? Or? Well, it's a, yeah, well, at the end of the day, um, the, the film school is a, is a school within the greater university and there's a hierarchical um, you know, um, structure to that. And, and again, with, um, with, with different um, you know, insurances in place to make sure that you guys as students are never put in, you know, in harm's way. And, um, and so for that, yeah, we, we do have to make sure that, um, and, 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 and again, because of the variety, you know, whether it be medicine, whether it be engineering, whether it be criminology, whether it be law, um, each one's different. And so when they look at what the film school does, um, you know, quite often the response is you do what? Like, you know, you send students, I didn't, I didn't even know a border existed between South Australia and Queensland until a group of film school students went out to shoot there in Thargaminda. Wow. Um, you know, we've had students go to the French Pyrenees, New Zealand, um, you name it. And that's not a normal practice for a lot of the other different programs. So first of all, we need to show to them that we understand what we're doing um, and that we've you know, taken advice from industry and that we believe that we're meeting best practice. And for them to sort of, you know, at least not necessarily completely get it, but at the same time sort of respect that the, the people that have, have put that in place um, know what they're doing and be able to sign off on it and move forward from mm. there. Yeah, so just so I can get like a visual idea of like the hierarchy. So there's like a, there's a Griffith University upper body level and then there's the film school and then is there like you underneath or like... Well, no, no. So there's, there's, there's Griffith University. Because I can imagine like there'd be so many like sort of steps that you have to go through in various stages in order to get like permission and sort of thing from various different people. Like I can imagine it's like a kind of too many cooks in the kitchen sort of thing. No, look, all I'd say is um, it, 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 it just has to happen at what we refer to as a group level. Okay. So the group for us is arts, education and law. Um, and therefore um, the, the heads of that, which are the, the deans, um, are the ones that look at what you know take well look at what we're presenting. Um, they make an informed decision. Um, they also make an assessment of, of of us as the school and what we've done historically. And 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 it's it's about trust and faith at the same time, Caleb. So, um, but that's about as as high up as it needs to go. But but in addition to that, then also if you want to say what were the challenges with the film school, is that we're also taking advice from um, from the university with respect to return to campus, with respect to face to face teaching and as you know those who return to campus relatively early you'll all remember how quiet the building was how we were all very on ten quiet yeah yep, we were it was all, almost a ghost town yep we're all on tender hooks about you know sanitizing hands and about maintaining social distances or distancing and who's wearing masks and how many people are in a room and would there be would it be taught online or would it not be so all that all all of that advice comes from a central point mm. um all of the more nuanced um let's call it practice-based stuff um, is really coming from the individual mm. school. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's an important thing that we have to state is that there's so many moving parts, especially in an organization like this, in order to get everything ready to go and then making sure it's moving efficiently, there needs to be certain things that are put in place in order to make sure that everyone's not only doing it safely, but making sure we're also doing it the best way that we can. And I think that's important for people to understand is that, yeah, there is so many different levels and, you know, a simple thing might not be easily accomplished. And yeah, like there was little things like, you know, like for example, for casting, like that was something I was directly involved in. Um, one of the big things that we had to get sorted for casting was obviously acquiring rooms and uh, getting like a, a, a space that we could bring in actors to conduct auditions and stuff like that. And just, that just seems like a, such a simple task of, oh, just pick a room and then we'll go from there. But something as simple as that needed to go through the rigorous, okay, can we get that building uh, authorized? Can we get this room? What rooms can we have? How many people are in the building? That sort of thing. And I feel like, yeah, just even simple things like that um, in this sort of uh, you know pandemic world that we lived in, uh, yeah, it was very important that we made sure that we followed the correct steps in order to do things that were um, safe for everyone. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, in addition to that, there was also um, the challenge of bringing in people that weren't even students. So when you're casting, you're bringing in those, you know, those actors where we, you know, we don't have that background where we can get them to go and, you know, do the induction first and, mm. and to sign off on everything. And so, again, just from a nervous energy point of view is we have to say what, um, you know, if we've got to look at the risk factors and, um, you know, but as a credit to everybody, they conducted the conducted themselves I thought so, um, yeah. to the, the casting highest. process went really yeah, really smoothly did. and and going back to what you were touching on that that just goes to show you the 
um, just everybody coming to um, well coming to terms with the challenges. So in other words, yeah, like you said, it was easy once to just you know send an email um, to our central admin and say I want to book a room, and you'd book that room, and 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 it was done and dusted. But this time, even if you sent that email and our central admin team were happy to book the room, that would then pop up on um, the timetabling system, and then timetabling would have stepped in and said, who's booking rooms? There's mm. no teaching you know back on campus yet, and then we then have to go and put forward our case as to why um, this needs to happen and for them to align their thinking with, oh, okay, you're not doing this, you're doing that, and okay, blah, blah, blah. And then we end up with permission to go and do it. So, yeah, it was quite complicated and um, tiresome. Yeah, I can imagine. And I'm sure it was a similar sort of process with regards to actual production as well, like going out to dispatch and uh, receiving in the equipment and stuff like that so that we could go out onto location and then get the shots done and whatnot. Was it a similar sort of process with regards to getting permission for the equipment and stuff? 